From your first encounter with the driving examiner to the first time you soloed in Dad's wagon, driving has probably become almost second nature to you. Whether you're driving to work or taking that Sunday drive in the country, automobiles have come to play an important part in our daily lives. But to the men who race them, it is their daily lives. Spending thousands of dollars in man hours to give their machines the winning edge, these men come from all over the Midwest to compete with each other. Okay, I wanted to know, uh, do you do this for a living? No, I don't. It, well, I guess you can say that. It's like having two jobs. It, uh, the amount of time you spend on it and, and all that, it's, it's, it's two jobs is what it really is. You, well, what do you normally do for a living? I plumb. I'm a plumber in Joliet. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, must be a rather expensive hobby. Yeah, it is. If, uh, what's sitting there, you could probably buy for around $30,000. Uh, that's not, that's just including parts, uh, not including labor. If you were to run labor in it, you're talking $60,000 for the car itself. So. Uh, uh, what would you call this type of car? Well, you'd call it a late model stock car, but it's a 81 Camaro. 81? Yeah. Looks like it. Yeah. Well, they allow you to modify it and add spoilers for the aerodynamics and, and all that. How about the engine? It's a it's a 351 engine. It's uh, a guy from Morris builds it. It's Mike Walker, and he does a real good job. They last all year pretty much. Oh. Uh, what kind of thrill do you get from uh, owning and racing your own car? Mainly, it's just a hobby. I enjoy it uh, quite immensely. Oh, you must put a lot of time into it. Well, yeah, into quite a bit. My son and myself and uh, do quite a bit. With it, we spend a lot of time with it. Yeah. I seen you had a for sale sign on this car. Uh, what would a car like this be worth? Uh, <clears throat> this one here. Yeah. Uh, probably wouldn't find anything like this on a lot. <laughs> not hardly. The motor is home built. I built it myself. I see. And uh, the chassis is a Howe chassis. Yeah, yeah. I was asking eleven thousand five hundred for the car and the trailer complete. Uh, uh, but uh, you take a car like maybe Joe Shears, for instance. That car, right the way it sets, is worth thirty-five thousand dollars. I see. Uh, well, basically, you just start off with a few body parts, and the rest is... Uh, Mainly homemade. Homemade. Yes. Pretty much so. Except Funny they the call them stock cars. <laughs> uh, a little bit different between the years, cars of 12, 15 years ago than what they are today. Uh, what's the top speed a car like this will travel? Uh, whatever you want it to, depending on the size of the track and the gears that you have in the rear end. I see. Out here, we might be hitting about 90, roughly in that area. I know I I couldn't tell you offhand I I don't know but I noticed about. it was starting to drizzle a little bit. Uh, how long will they let the race go on if it uh, keeps? Well, if like it's this? a drizzle like it was, uh, there'll be not much of a problem because the track is warm and as soon as it hits, it'll the drops are small, it'll evaporate. But uh, if it starts coming down pretty good, they'll stop them. These are not rain tires. Yes, I noticed. Uh, is there any? Well, I know these tires are special, but. Uh, uh, what kind of tires are these? Oh, uh, they're Goodyear Eagles. They're not the super good Goodyear Eagles that the NASCAR boys use, but they're pretty comparable. I notice they don't have any treads to speak of, but except for that uh, little notches. It's a notches wear bar. It's a wear bar that oh, they use to judge. to judge how much uh, rubber is left on a tire. Yes. I see. Well, uh, I wish you luck today. Thank you very much. Ed Hoffman. Uh, where are you from, Ed? Chicago, Illinois. And I raced this track, uh, used to race every Friday night. We've got four track championships here and five at Indiana Speedway, the other track in the area. Uh, how, how, about how far do you usually travel? Well, go to a race? I've traveled all around the country in the past, and this year we have started uh, another friend of mine, a new racing association called the International Racing Association, and we're starting our May 16th opener at Indiana Speedway, and we're going to have our drivers run within a 300-mile radius of the Chicago area and we're offering them some 30 races for the year. And of course, today we got short track racing here, and I think we got the finest drivers in the country right here today. And I think it's going to be a super show, and the fans is really going to love it. Uh, now, what kind of car is this you own? This one here is a Camaro, and it's owned by Bill's Auto Repair. I'm just a driver. I see. And it's a brand new Camaro uh, with 81 sheet metal on it because it's the old long wheelbase car and we're running against the brand new cars with shorter wheelbases, but I'm sure we're gonna give them a good showing today. Uh, what's the advantage of a shorter wheelbase? Well, modern technology and improvement. They feel that they're gonna run faster, and I'm here today to show them that we're gonna run faster. <laughs> the 
importance of uh, being weighed in for the race? Well, there's rules that you got to be 60% uh, of the weight can be on the left side of the car, no more. Uh, that's because of all the turning. Yeah. Right, it makes the car corner better. Uh, what happens if you're overweight? Are you disqualified? That's right. So uh, what? What? Uh, how do you weigh your car before the race to make sure that it's uh, evenly distributed? I've got four platform scales at home in the garage. Four platform scales. Right. Well, I wish you luck. Thank okay. you. Shower has threatened to postpone the race early in the afternoon. Many spectators sought refuge underneath the grandstands. Okay, I'm here with Frank Welsh, president of the Grundy County Fairgrounds. Uh, I noticed it's uh, kind of a lousy day it turned out to be. It's pretty, well, it's, pretty uh, nice. it's too bad after all the predictions it was going to be the nicest weekend of the spring, but these things happen. I still hope they'll get the race in. Uh, this is an art co race, of course, which is a special event. And uh, our season will open Friday night, May the 7th. Uh, we'll run that every Friday night for the remainder of the year, closing down around Labor Day. Uh, most of us are familiar with uh, NASCAR. Uh, what does ARTCO stand for? Uh, ARTCO is an organization that was formed several years ago by a fellow named Art Frigo. And uh, he took the first two letters of each of his name and called it ARTCO. Since then, uh, he has moved out of the area, and a fellow by the name of, uh, of John... Uh, uh, I can't think of his last name, has taken it over. And he runs about eight or 10 races a year. Two at our track, two in Wisconsin, different tracks around the Middle West. Uh, Friday night they have local racing, is it? We have three class, three divisions in our racing. We'll have some of the same cars that are running here today. Uh, Tom Jones, Ed Hoffman, uh, Lee Schuler, Larry Schuler, uh, and I understand Tracy's gonna drive this year. So some of the same cars that are here today will be running with us every Friday. Then we have our second division, which is our sportsman division. This is the cars that are, they're still, they're still a, a slightly modified car, but they're not as expensive an automobile as our late models. Most of these late model cars are worth anywhere from twenty to $35,000. Our sportsman cars is a division. They run a cheaper tire. We do not allow quick change rear ends. Uh, we force them to use a single two-barrel carburetor. We make racing a little cheaper so the fellow that doesn't have the experience or the money to get into big time racing has something to run. Then we have our third division, which is a strictly an amateur division. And uh, this is uh, for our beginners. The fellow that wants to give it a try, uh, he cannot do anything to the car, modify it in any way, other than put a roll bar in for his protection. And uh, he has to run on street tires. And uh, although the purse isn't very great, uh, it, we started at the middle of last year and it's been very successful. And it gives a fellow that wants to get out in that track and try it uh, a chance to do it very inexpensively. And uh, by and large, that's our three divisions. And we start time trials every Friday night at seven o'clock and our first race at uh, eight. And we try to have the people out of here by 10.30, quarter to 11. Uh, I uh, I've heard they had dem demolition derbies up here occasionally, too. Normally, we'll have two demolition derbies a year. We have one on 4th of July during our county fair, which will take place uh, June the 30th through July the 4th. And then we close the season down, usually Labor Day night, with a demolition. And uh, two of them is enough, because after our demolition race on, the, on this racetrack, uh, it takes us five or six days to get the track cleaned up, because they actually they just smash them all to pieces. and. Uh, Although we make them take all the glass out, there's chrome, there's pieces of engine, bumpers, everything imaginable is out in that track. Uh, I noticed, uh, I saw a sign up here that you're going to have rodeos coming up eventually, too. Yeah, that's our county fair. Now, our fair this year will start on June the 30th, which is, uh, I believe, on a Wednesday, and it'll run through July the 4th. Uh, so far, our program isn't completely put together, but we will have uh, national tractor pull. We've had that now. This will be our fourth year, I think, which is probably one of the highlights of our fair. We're also going to have four-wheel drive truck pull. Now, I think the tractor pull is on Thursday night, July the 1st, and uh, the truck pull is on Wednesday night, June 30th. Then on Friday night, uh, we'll have a 50-lap championship uh, race for our late-model stock cars. Uh, 
And then the big rodeo will be in on Saturday afternoon. Let's see if I get this correct now. No, Saturday night and Sunday afternoon will be rodeo time. And this is a national sanctioned rodeo. You'll have all your big, your big uh, riders here. And then we'll finish up Sunday, which is the July 4th, with a midget automobile race. And uh, we'll be racing that night along with our big demolition race. And that should wind the fair down. Now, there is a possibility with uh, 4th of July being on, on Sunday that Monday may be a holiday. I've checked, uh, excuse me. I dropped two rain checks. All right. Uh, you can see the skies are starting to clear a little bit and the people are going to come pouring back in, so I'm going to have to get back over here and help out. But we may run on July the 5th, that would be Monday, and if it is going to be a legal holiday, we may run a special race that day too. So those people who are uh, race-minded can kind of keep their eyes on the media and see what's going on. Uh, is there any number people can call uh, to get information on future events coming oh, up? Oh, yes. And we have a weather phone also. The fairground phone is uh, area code 815-942-5043. And uh, there's always, if there's no one answers, there is an answering service hooked to it. And if they will leave their message or ask any question they wish, well, we'll be glad to call them back. Okay. Well, thank you very much, sir. You bet. It's my, my pleasure. Goodbye. Let's get the sun out.